Hi everybody, welcome to Monday. And yes, I'm not wearing glasses. And the background seems really dark because I'm wearing a white shirt. I never do this, but I had to do promo photos for my radio gig. So that's why I look kind of weird. But I still have the devil horns going on despite myself. Either that or it's old man Logan hair. I'm going to go with the old man Logan hair. Um, but by the time you guys see this, all the footage for Boss Fight Episode 5 will be shot. Yay. Oh my god. Um, so then all that's left is I've already started doing the final music and sound mix, which is a beast this episode, but we are on track for the end of the month, this thing finally coming out. Uh, and there will be more announcements for Patreons, more goodies and what's coming next and a heads up and sneak previews and early access stuff. So help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Um, and this is sort of relevant to what I'm going to talk about today. The events of the last few weeks have made me realize that people just absolutely are out of touch with what professional full-time creators go through what the process is and how stuff goes wrong. And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about that because the conspiracy theories on stuff are just like, I've, I've talked to other, uh, you know, creator friends of mine of, of various, you know, various levels. And it's all unanimous where it's like, no, no, it doesn't work that way. No, not at all. And uh, that's why I think, and, and obviously nobody thinks that the general public is like deliberately getting it wrong. The goodwill goes that way. I wish it went both ways. But But what happens is that making anything of any scale um, involves a lot of people and a lot of layers of approval. And especially in film... There's so many ways that somebody can take something great and screw it up at the absolute last minute, uh, whether it's demanding last minute revisions or multiple rounds of last minute revisions on scripts. That's the big one lately. That's the one I found like you can get great talent, right? And the talent doesn't stop being talented all of a sudden, right? Actors have gotten so good at such a young age, right? And with all the digital stuff and the higher budget stuff, like that stuff's pretty much covered. The reason you end up with great talent and crappy scripts is because everybody's demanding rewrites to satisfy this market and that market and the next market and this, you know, subsidiary thing and this tie-in thing and all that stuff. And by the end, you've got a mess and a script that's totally incoherent. It even happens in games. It happens a lot in games that you'll set your narrative, narrative designer, you'll set your narrative, you'll have your giant flow chart of doom that you have to print out on like multiple pieces of paper and stick it up on the wall because it's so fucking big because you're tracking your narrative and someone will come in and like break module four like major module of 12 and okay you try to rearrange it as best you can but you miss something because it's a big mad scramble because you're you know halfway through your cash burn and there's just this thing that's left with its ass hanging out and do we all wish it were otherwise yes do we have any control of it being otherwise? No, no, we don't. The the people, you know, below the top tier, we're just by by midpoint in a project, the people actually doing the work are really just trying to get through it. There's a real uh, kind of band of brothers banding together like let's just stop being shit on by the higher ups thing that happens a midway in a lot of projects. And, you know, everybody works on a bunch of stuff that doesn't come out. Welcome to my life the last two years. Um, at least I got paid for most of it. Uh, but, 
you know, that that's the nature of the beast. And there is absolutely nothing individual creators can do about it. Why am I telling you this? Because people really don't seem to get what it feels like from the other side when the fan conspiracies start. There have been absolutely some outliers who were legitimately bad actors. People who just, you know, for one reason or another, took the money and ran, uh, conned people. Th th those do exist. Those do exist. People who have been around for years and years and years and, you know, keep getting work and keep producing things. Those are not the people that are like that for the most part. Well, sometimes on the producer end. But, you know, those few bad apples make everybody else look bad. That's understandable to a point. But there is a lot of frustration out there that people get accused of things without evidence. And what it does is it creates this you know, understandable defense mechanism in creators. Um, and the funny thing is, is it's not that different from the defense mechanism that's being triggered in the fan base, which is which is what makes the whole thing so damn tragic, right? Um, fans are, you know, you're trying to shit up the things we love and it's not fair, we're people too. And creators are like, you guys are making way too much out of a tweet I put up when it was 3 a.m. local time and I was half drunk and didn't think for a second that anybody would take this thing this literally, but I don't want to delete it now because that'll just make me look more guilty. That is literally what a lot of the OMG gotcha tweets tend to be, or it's, you know, you tweet hungover or you just tweet really goddamn tired. I was out shooting stuff for New Music Nation um, Saturday in Niagara Falls, got a lot of sun, was around a lot of people, got blasted with weed smoke. There's about 15 minutes I don't remember super clearly for that because I'm allergic. And then I got up today, you know, wipe the goop out of my eyes and hey, let's do boss fight stuff. You get tired. You get punchy. You get, you, my forehead's a little bit burned. My nose is a little bit burned. Like, and the fact that it's only a little bit, bless, right? But you're human. And people cannot suppress the urge to be cheeky or snarky or heaven forbid in poor taste constantly. And especially creative people who, let's face it, we wouldn't get into this line of work if we weren't somewhat interested in communicating something that matters to us. Um, I, <laughs> my mother put me in performing because I was a super duper shy kid. Uh, no one believes it anymore. Um, but I was a really shy kid, um, you know, all through up until, oh God, um, even grade nine. I mean, yeah, um, but I loved performing and did I love standing in front of a bunch of people who are all looking at me. Oh God, no. I went high production values at my own wedding. I stuffed 11 kids in my wedding party because I didn't want people looking at me. That's, people were like, you're crazy for having 11 kids. Like, no, 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 they're cute. You're cute. I make custom teddy bears for all of them. You're cute. They walked down the aisle with these teddy bears and they were the little, like, like they, they were dressed up like, you know, informal wear too. And it's like, look at all that. Look at all that. Look at this and look at that. And look at the pretty sky and look at the pretty canopy and all that stuff. Don't look at me. Okay, the giant white dress you can look at, but like, just just don't look at me. Fail. Good. Ah, don't fall. Um, That's that's what I remember. Um, And then I remember having one sip of the very sweet kiddish wine and going, okay, 
that doesn't normally affect me that way. That's how like nerve wracking it was. A lot of performers are introverts, believe it or not, because we get put into performing by someone thinking it will bring us out of our shell. And what it does is it makes us fall in love with the work. And so we do the work, even though we're not, I'll say we're not super crazy about elements of the process. There are elements of the process I utterly love. I really miss live theater because of the collaboration. I remember I used to love the whole process of rehearsal and you you do get hooked on that feeling of the stage creaking beneath your feet. Um, you know, that, that part I, I very much miss. I miss the teamwork, I miss the rehearsals, I, I miss the camaraderie. Um, but again, that two minutes before curtain um, you know, the best advice I ever got was don't look, um, don't peek out, don't. My old dance teacher, Maxine Ross, she'd slay us if we peeked. Miss Gwen did too, because, oh my God, it psychs you out. If, if you aren't an extrovert, it psychs you out. The problem is that moment when you first walk out and you see everybody there, that psychs you out too. So you have to sort of look past everybody and then slowly... You know, by the time you're into your second or third line, you're not yourself anymore. You're in character and you're okay. Why am I telling you all of this? Because, you know, a lot of YouTubers are people who started this stuff when they were between jobs or started this stuff because they got laid off or started that stuff just because there's something they're really interested in. It's not exactly people who super crave attention. Yes, there are some YouTubers who super crave attention, but a lot of people just legitimately love the stuff they want to talk about so much that they overcome the fact that we don't love attention for the sake of attention. We like feedback. You know, we like constructive notes, positive or negative, because constructive one way or the other is great, right? Like Friday's video. Um, but do I terribly love attention for the sake of attention? No, I still get um, really like sick to my stomach. If I think about it too hard, I have to be focused on the work. I have to be focused on, okay, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. So when people start accusing you of stuff with little to no real evidence, um, it hurts and it makes you angry, especially when it's absurd. Like you can laugh off a certain amount of absurdity, but there's this thing that happens on the internet where something starts absurd and you're like, there is no way anyone is going to believe this. It's just so absurd. And that's the thing that people believe. I mean, I remember during the big bad Gamergate days, there was this troll group who was trying to suck up to this particular like right wing troll personality. And they made up all this crap about me, um, including the fact that I was raped by my uncle when I was a kid. And I was a former stripper and, you know, bless, bless the fans, right? They, they were like, you guys were like, if you had been a stripper, you would have told us that actually would have helped your brand. I'm like, yes, but the echo chamber of lies was so ridiculous that the, you know, right wing troll personality who these guys were trying to suck up to, you know, emails leaked. And he even believed the whole rape by my uncle thing, which was absolutely not true. Um, and was like, I didn't tell anybody to go mucking around in people's personal lives. Like they didn't go mucking around in my personal lives. It was completely made up. But people believe the most absurd shit. And then it's just out there. I mean, Lizzo and Cardi B just put out a song called Rumors about all this nonsense. And the thing that really stings is that like 10 to 15% of it is true. It's usually the 10 to 15 least exciting part. And you got to understand that when people are just making shit 
up about you, it becomes increasingly difficult to legitimately be able to listen to feedback from the same pockets of people, not the individuals, but the same pockets of people that are making up this crap. And the reason I say pockets of people, because let's face it, on the internet, people use pseudonyms, you know, and unless you actually like get on a Zoom call with somebody or, or you know, I've talked to somebody for a really, really long time and, you know, established trust, you don't know who these people are. And like, it can be a commenter for a really, really long time. You still don't know who they are. Um, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know how to contextualize the criticism or the praise. And, um, you know, I had a point last week where people were telling me I didn't know how to do a Hadouken. I just didn't like Metroidvania games, even though one of my favorite modern games of all time is Guacamelee, and I streamed all of Hollow Knight. Um, oh, I just didn't like Metroidvania games. And then, you know, the accusations that I hate men with stuff. I'm just trying to recover from bad takes when I do my normal thing about women being whole people and being allowed to be sexy. Like, it's just gotten ridiculous. And I'm telling you this because I did have moments where I was just like, fuck all of it. Fuck all of this. I don't care anymore. Fuck. And there were a few people who bothered to, well, a dozen. That's not a few, right? Most people don't get that. But they bothered to give a shit and they messaged me and they pulled me back from that. And bless those people because they didn't have to do it. But it was the, they felt like things were unfair on my behalf. It wasn't the condolences. It wasn't the, I'm so sorry this happened to you. It was the, this is just fucking wrong and stupid that pulled me back from the brink. Cause I'm like, oh my God, at least some people out there recognize I haven't become a totally different person. People have just twisted nonsense again. And then you get into the sense of this isn't the last time, you know, this isn't the first time, far from it. This isn't going to be the last time. Oh God, this is going to happen again. What am I doing? You know, um, you know, the last time I almost quit, I wrote that whole epic thing of how Anita Sarkeesian almost made me quit writing about video games. And I realized it was the same thing from just a different source. The feeling like I was just being bullied. The, the feeling like I was back in high school just being stuffed in a locker again, right? And that the feeling doesn't make it real, but that is legitimately how it felt. And the reason it feels that way, I realized, is because why would I come out here and talk about the things I talk about and put myself on the line the way I do and have, you know, the people that most people are terrified of hate my guts and like actively call me out on social media with my name scratched out, but I'm still literally the devil and a cool chick okay with sexism and like all that shit. Why would I do that if I didn't mean it? Because my God, I'm, I'm, I'm not shilling in OnlyFans. I'm not selling merchandise. I'm just making content people want to watch and hope enough people will, you know, voluntarily monetize that content. You don't get more direct and honest and, you know, vulnerable in that way. And I, I could do the shill stuff, but I don't want to. You know, which is why I don't understand why people suddenly make this stuff up about me. And I was told, well, people make, you know, by somebody I talked to, like, well, people do this to everybody. And I'm like, yeah, but why? And I was reminded it's because to a lot of people, we're not human. We're characters. And that hits every creator periodically. You'll read like Harper's Bazaar articles, but super famous people. I remember um, an Angelina Jolie interview back in the day where um, she said she was in this photo shoot and she just started crying uncontrollably. We all 
have these moments where you just something will hit you and you it won't even be about that it'll be a thing that makes you think about another thing that makes you think about another thing and you just feel so depersonalized and it just wrecks you and you have to crawl back out from that and that's not things that people who are in it just for grift or people who are in it just for money feel that's that's somebody who legitimately wants to make stuff that makes people more informed or you know happier or distracted or or whatever just something that makes people's lives a little less shitty right makes people's lives a little bit better that is what the majority of of creative professionals and content creators want doing it for the money is what's left when the business strips that away from you and and this is where i'm i'm gonna go people do hit that point after a while it's, ah, it's just a paycheck you know older actors who do shitty movies just for the paycheck or younger actors who just do movies because hey it's 20 million dollars i don't care how bad it is i made 20 million dollars but that's that happens after all the bullshit robs disconnects you not robs it disconnects you it's still there your reasons for getting into it in the first place are still there but you're detached from it because of all the crap and why am i telling you this well because you can either be part of the churn that makes people disconnect from the crap or you can be part of you know the very important minority that allows people to recouple with the more noble reasons for doing this stuff you do have that power i keep hearing people i have no influence over this i have no influence with this maybe someone will hear us about a video or a video game or a tv show or something like that and here's the thing people aren't going to listen to you if you seem to be like not telling the truth about them hyperbole is the greatest way to get a creator to not listen to you trying to mind read it's like no that's not what i was thinking at all next because we just can't we can't we can't listen to people who think we're someone we're not because how is that helpful right so if you can give a really fair and reasoned and backed up critique of something yeah, I don't know of anybody who's not open to that. A lot of us thrive on that. But that's not 99.9% .9 of what we get. We get angry tweets accusing us of ridiculousness because somebody didn't like three episodes in a season, you know? And that's not the same as making jokes, right? That's not the same as being really passionate about something. That That's awesome, you know? Um it's 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 the conspiracy theories it's the fiction outside of the fiction that will really disconnect and everybody's got a story of just ridiculousness that way nobody takes anybody who sounds even remotely like that seriously as someone we should listen to because that way lies madness. If, if you're just listening to stuff like that, all that's left is the money. Because, like, that's, that's monster you. That's Mr. Scratch to Alan Wake, right? Like, that's the fucking dark half. So hopefully this, this helped you react strongly to media better. There are ways. If anybody has any specific questions, please ask. I'm happy to answer them. This is the beginning of a conversation, not the end. You know what's coming now. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.